Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, November 17, 2022. And this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank you tried to say all you guys and girls for being here tonight. Our numbers continue to climb. I may take this live on YouTube. You guys let me know what you think about that for what it's worth. All right, what are we talk about? Well, we're going to talk about the fact that I got the date wrong. <laughs> Today's the 17th. Anyway, current market conditions, obviously, I have a plethora to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. I doubt there'll be any crypto now unless you want to short something, but we'll certainly take a look. I woke up thinking this morning that I probably need to talk about how we are faring doing this bear market. I think it's spelled faring wrong. And then one thing I started doing, I guess it was just last week, wow, was asking for more and more feedback for the shows. And, and that's been so much better for me and i think for you too just tell me what you want me to recover and i'll be happy to do it along with a few other things obviously but uh, one thing i was asked a couple of weeks ago was different strategies for different time frames and that's one i've been kind of sitting on and thinking about a little bit and i'll have a little more to say about that tonight and then that'll probably come up as an ongoing type of thing uh what based on one of the questions i want to help and uh, I, I asked this guy if it was okay if I beat him up a little bit. Like last week, I said, George told me I could beat him up with tough love. And new guy came in and said, hey, he's asking me about different things. And I started kind of beating him up a little bit. And I said, uh, do you mind if I beat you up? He's like, no, 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 go ahead. So I'm going to beat him up a little bit tonight. Uh, he just asked me to keep his name out of it, <laughs> which is fine. But I want to touch upon that. And he had a question about trading through earnings. And it'll all make a lot more sense. And a minute. Somebody recently, or recently, uh, last minute said, hey, there's a 15% run in the P's. How come there's no setups? And I'll flesh all that out, plus a bunch more stuff in just one second. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Always often summing up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, so how are we faring during this bear market? Well, for reference, and I grabbed this slide or screen capture earlier today so at that time we were down a round number 17 percent for the year now i think a more important number to look at is the fact that we were closing in on being down 30 percent for the year or at least over 25 percent that's a real substantial move and surviving that is is key and so I think that's one number that needs to be, uh, can't be minimized. And, and we don't know for sure whether or not that nice little opening gap reversal day is going to continue to be the mother of all bottoms or not. But let's just hope that the diaper change for 2022 was 27% round numbers. And again, that's substantial. When you start getting close to a 30% drop in a market, it can really devastate some portfolios because that's the overall market. Think about the individual issues and, and what they're doing. So how are we faring? So a couple of things, disclaimers and such to get out the way. The results are hypothetical, but are based on mechanically following recommendations. Now I do mechanically follow the service, but I also put a little discretion on top of that. So I do take these actual trades, but for educational purposes, these are all hypothetical. Now, one thing that I thought about, and I was a little bummed out because I really didn't have a fantastic example for you this year, but discretion can help greatly. And then I went through my trades and I looked at the recommendations. And usually if something's a near miss on a stop, I write it down, stop, uh, near miss on an IPC or a near miss on a stop or Nick a stop, I should say, I'll write it down. There were a couple IPTs that were missed. And the one account that I like to usually draw from the most for presentation purposes and for educational purposes, obviously too. I noticed that I'd lost money on one where a little discretion could have been used. And in another account, I actually made money. So it probably netted out as a scratch, but I was able to lock and load at that IPT on one or two of these, but overall, I don't think I did that much better using discretion so far in 2022. 
Now, just an FYI, when it comes to official results, I do talk about periods of time like this, since we're in a bear market, I thought it'd be important to talk about what's going on, good, bad, and ugly. But as a general rule, I don't publish official results, and that's due to discretion, as I just talked about, qualifying things, quantifying things, I should say, outside of the official recommendations. Now, I have to be gauged on my official recommendations. I realize that. But I want the service to be more than just a tips sheet, and that's why I put out the Landry list. And sometimes when conditions are absolutely fantastic, I print money off that Landry list. And I know several of you guys have told me the same thing. But you get a year like 2020, and it's just 2022. It's just grind it out, grind it out, grind it out. And there's a lot more to say about results and such. If you go to my website, DaveLeonard.com, and then that rest of that trading-service-fact, or if you're on the service page, it's just a little frequently asked questions. And that's that'll clear up probably 99% of the questions that I'm asked. All right, so let's take a look at this. So I went back to the end of last year. This was a service of the first day of 2022. And we were still long these two stocks, APG and ARLP. Now, the open profit drawdown, meaning that we had an okay profit in that APG. In fact, we were up about 110%. So that was obviously a good trade. But unfortunately, that was pretty much the peak for the year. Now, you know, somebody said years ago, Dave, <laughs> it's kind of a long story. How do I give you a Reader's Digest? Uh, back before, I think about it been back in the Prodigy days. Anybody remember Prodigy before the internet was kind of a big thing? Anyway, I got in one of the bulletin boards and there was a guy pumping a, a medical pump stock and he kept he kept pumping and pumping and pumping and I kept buying more and more and more. And I was a young punk kid, didn't know what I was doing, but I thought this guy sounded pretty good and made a lot of sense. And uh, they missed earnings or something and the stock halved and, and I got pretty much wiped out on that deal. Probably pretty much wiped out on, in general. <laughs> and uh, I called up the guy because we had become really friendly. I'm like, WTF? He's like, Dave, no one rings a bell when a stock has topped. And I've never forgotten that. That was a very, very, very expensive lesson for me. Anyway, now nobody beat, rings a, a bell when a stock has topped. So obviously I didn't know that was going to be the absolute top on that stock. And then that open profit drawdown was pretty ugly. Now, as I say quite often, with the turtles, Dennis was okay with the open profit drawdowns because it comes to the territory. It's kind of like it reminds me of a speech Mike Moody gave to the AAPTA a few years back where he was talking about momentum. And I raised my hand and said, Mike, my problem with momentum is it ends badly. And it's like anything you could do about that. And he's like, well, Dave, if you're going to have a baby, he got to talk like the other guy. <laughs> Yeah, he says, you're going to have a lot of baby poop. And he says, babies are great, but they come with a lot of poop. So that's the poop that comes with the, with the trend trading is those open profit drawdowns. And it sucks, but if you learn that it's part of the game, yeah, you still drop F-bombs. You still get pissed off. Don't get me wrong. We're still human, right? But it's, it, it's a lot easier to live with what's normal, so to speak. Now, the ARLP, the reason we don't just bail out when we're doing really well is because we don't know if that's going to continue higher. And you can see since the beginning of the year, this ARLP was down in the 12s. Well, it's more than doubled since then, and it's given up a little bit of that. But this mark, the mark to market that I used for this was uh, today's intraday price. It was actually a little bit better by the close of this 92.60. So and that's on a hypothetical 100K account, although I do, again, take these trades. And I'll show you the dividends that came from that in a minute. I think I have them, but if I didn't post them in here, I posted them in my Trading Simplified show, which will be on my website tomorrow early, and then the week of charts will follow. By the way, this is be, this is being recorded, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I uh, wouldn't want to say, like it if you like it, and if you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. Now, here's a number I'm not very proud of, and these are the closed positions. And it's been a fairly tough year for me in this bear market. We had some nice shorts setting up early on. We made a little bit of money. And then we had this huge retrace rally, which just wiped out everything. And it, it comes with the territory. And that's just shorting 
in general. Now, I have to be careful, as I said before, when, when we used to race sailboats, sailmaker, who, who now I live about stone's throw away from him. He don't remember me, but uh, I don't know. He's, how do you forget me? But anyway, uh, we used to, every now and then he'd be on the boat with us, and, and his thing was, if you love light air, it'll love you. And he was like really into light air. And if he was on your boat and the air was light, you were likely going to do pretty good in the race. He can get the boat moving. So it's kind of like if you can't be in a trend you love, love the trend you're in. Well, we're not really in a trend. It's been a choppy, 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 choppy bear market. And he'd say, oh, well, it dropped 30%. You should have done great on the short side. Not quite that easy. And the more I'm around a lot of traders, I'm learning more and more and more. I, I, I talked with a, a woman lately who used to be a hedge, used to be a trader for a hedge fund like the lead trader, and they only shorted, and she's actually waiting for the market to improve a little bit before she comes in and starts doing some day trading. She'd prefer the market to be start going up a little bit before she comes in and do some day trading. So it makes me feel kind of normal, like, okay, it's a little tougher to make money on a short side than a long side. Believe me, long side is much, much, much easier. And I'm gonna touch upon a few of those things in just a minute. Now, this was a, a, a welcome surprise. I probably wouldn't know a dividend if it hit me in the ass, but I think one of you guys pointed out, hey, I got a little nice dividend in my account. So I looked it up and and it, either that or by accident, I was trying to get the trades and I'm like, what's this What's this $200 deposit, $100 deposit? And then this year they've been pretty good, like four and $500 deposits. I think it was two days ago, I got a couple of those stuck in my account, which was nice. Anyway, so $1,500 in dividends, you add all that up, it comes to 3,911, which again, if we if we assume that counts 100K, then that's a 3.9% gain, which is pretty damn good for a bear market. Now, am I happy with this? No. <laughs> am I interviewing myself? Yes. But I sure would like the close trades to be a lot better. Now, keep in mind, all it takes is one outlier, like that ARLP has saved our ass this year, obviously. And I think you use the word hold, but I was hoping to catch another one or two this year. It seems like we're only getting a couple a year. But in a great market, okay, if we go back to a nice bull trend, we might get three or four of those. So how are we faring? Well, as I kind of alluded to a second ago, meh. I'm far from happy, okay? But I'll take any positive returns in a bear market. And one thing I was thinking about before going live, and I think I said this in the service tonight, is, you know, not that you want to not love light air, right? Or not that you want to love the trend you're in, whatever. But I think a bear market is more about survival than performance. And I think that you really have to wait and wait and wait for the setups. And, and I'm seeing you guys get a little anxious and I'm, I'll show you a question here in one second. You can see it actually written out. And, and, I, and I hear you and I feel your pain, but the secret to trading and making money longer term is knowing when not to put capital in the harm's way. And if you think about it, if you can figure out when not to trade, then every trade you make is gonna make money. Now, obviously it's not that easy, but as a general statement, you generally know when you shouldn't be trading, okay? And don't trade during that those times. And obviously, even if conditions are great, you will still have losses. But at least you won't grind yourself into a hole during less than ideal conditions. And I'm gonna flesh that out in a minute too. Now, as I just said, open drawdowns, open profit drawdowns suck. But as Dennis pointed out to the turtles, it comes to the territory, Outliers do remain key, okay? Without that one outlier, I would have negative returns for the year. I think if you add it all up, yeah, it'd be pretty negative. Not by a tremendous amount. I mean, on a relative basis. Well, you can't eat relative performance, right? It doesn't put food on the table, but at least it's in the black. Now, one or two outliers would make the biggest difference in the world. And I know I preach that. And as I've said, ad nauseum, you know, I can think about one situation in particular, but there's there's been a dozen or so over the last 20 something years, maybe 20 or so, where people quit or take a pause and then bam, the next day I, I 
find some great setups. And in one case, I'm always afraid to ask the guy. But one guy told me he was going to take a pause. He wasn't going to quit me. He wasn't going to leave me. I won't quit you. <laughs> but he was going to go do something else for a little while because he could not see any setups in the foreseeable future. And neither could I. And as I've said a million times, if I didn't have the trading service, I probably would not have done my analysis that day. I would have done something else because I probably would have said, you know what, I'm probably not going to find any setups. So why bother? But I found two setups that day, and they turn out to be the two biggest winners of the year. And I, I'm a big fan of uh, paying attention to microcosms and things like that. So I'm guessing that if I'm getting one email from a person who's kind of given up, then there's probably 20 other people out there that are also kind of giving up. Anyway, so outlier is very important, and that's why you must be present to win. And that's why you have to do your homework every day. And even when conditions aren't great, like IPOs lately have sucked. I don't know about what you guys have seen, but I know John in our group tends to do a lot of IPO stuff. And, and I dig I dig what you're doing there, John. And I like to follow what you're doing too. But I really can't find a lot of IPOs to get excited about it. If you guys want to bring some up in a few minutes when we get the live charts, please do. We'll take a look at them. But there hasn't been much there. Now, when you're in a bear market, as I preach, you want to see each position to its fruition. And, and what I love about the Facebook group is I'm able to see what you guys are doing and, and thank you guys so much for sharing. But I saw a lot of you guys give up on ARLP. And I know it's tough because you look at that open profit drawdown. And I did it, I did the math a while back and it was something like $5,000 of drawdown if that stock gets hit. Now, it, right now it's not that far away. So it's just a little bit more. But I think peak to trough, it was quite the drawdown. Now, you got to realize we got in at less than $5 a share, and now it's $20 something a share. So the equity swings are, are exacerbated, and they're much, much, much bigger because we got in at 2,000 shares with one point stop, and now we got 1,000 shares left and, and a multi point stop. So, whatever that multi point stop was, probably four or five points, that's going to be a four or $5,000 drawdown when hit drawdown from open profits, okay? Still at 9,000 for the year, but you might give up some of that 9,000. Now, knock on wood, we just almost uh, come in. We almost hit that stop recently, and, and I'm not gonna say we're out the woods yet, but we have kind of bounced off of those levels, and maybe just maybe the correction is done. Now, as I said earlier, discretion really wasn't huge in 2022. I can't really give you a lot of good examples. I mean, if you wanted me to give you a, a selected, I could probably get two or three selected examples where I use discretion on the IPT. I don't remember any on the protection stop that worked, and that actually cost you a little bit more money. But I could I could cherry pick some examples where the discretion worked, but I don't have any big, aha, look at this. You know, we stayed with this position, or I stayed with this position, and it went up another 20K. I don't have any of those this year. But every now and then you will, what you, by using a little bit of discretion, now, it doesn't mean throw caution to the wind like the SGML trade that failed miserably last week. Was that just last week? I used a little discretion around the stop because it was really weak around the open, sold off really hard. And I ended up losing more than the 2% maximum, but I was okay with that. I was willing to let it go a little bit further just in case it turned around. But what it didn't turn around, I had to have an uncle point in mind and I had to GTFO. But again, if you're using discretion, if it keeps you in an outlier, or at the least, if you're able to take that IPT off, initial profit target off, and they can stop that or scratch and remainder, maybe you make, let's say, $1,000, maybe 1% versus a 2% loss. Now, a $1,000 gain versus a $2,000 loss, that's a 3% swing on a 100K account. So you can see that's a pretty big swing. And you do that two or three times, and it begins to add up. But the real money, again, is in those outliers. And I don't want to make them sound too elusive. They come along just about at the right time. Like I said, this poor guy, I beat him up every week. But this is just this one email sticks out in my head when he quit trading, and then we had two that day. It's like you never know when they're coming. When I bitched my wife about being in a drawdown, it's always the same thing. Well, how long are you going to be in a drawdown? When are you going to get out? How long is it going to take? It's like, I have no idea. And that's what trend following is all about. And if you think about it, 
friend following, number one, it's the only way to make money. The only way to make money in markets is to capture a trend, okay? I don't care what you're trading, the market better trend, otherwise you're not gonna make money after you get in, of course. But the other thing is, it's almost like trend following is so damn hard, it just wears you out, wears you out, wears you out, wears you out, and then bam, right when you give up, everything starts to turn around. And as I've said a thousand times, and I think it was in an article that I freshened up a little bit and published recently, but it was one of my clients had kind of given up on everything, but he was still with the service. It seems like I'm getting more and more of those clients where they're willing to tough it out, but the only negative is they do tend to stop trading when conditions get like they are now. And the only problem with that is you don't know when the next outlier is coming along. And then it's, of course, I thought SGML was gonna be the next big trade, failed miserably, but you never knew. And a lot of you guys I know didn't take that. And that's fine, but that could have turned into the biggest outlier of the year, okay? It didn't, right? But you can't just stop. But anyway, long story endless, what this client told me was when he looked at the portfolio after taking a couple of weeks off, he said he felt like he broke up with his fiance on a Thursday and Saturday night, she won the Powerball. So I, that it's always stuck with me on that. Anyway, all right. So you got in after ARLP. You got in. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Jeff says he got in service after ARLP. Yeah, we'll have to look at it to see if there was any good entries that could have been uh, been had. Okay, Jeff, we'll get to that one in the live charts for sure. And uh, SST, we'll take a look at that for discretion. Thank you, Jeff. All right, lately, what a concept. <laughs> Asking you guys what you want me to cover. And uh, to my surprise, you guys have given me some really great stuff. Not that I'm surprised, but it seems like in the Facebook group, we're always talking about stocks and stuff. And uh, it just seems like there's not a whole lot of questions left over. But lately, you've been giving me some good stuff. Anyway, this was from a couple of weeks ago. And it's something I've been thinking about quite a bit. And different strategies for different time frames. Now, the caveat here, and I'm assuming that he was talking about intraday stuff, and I'll have to go in and reread re the question. But I'm not a day trader, okay? And I've preached against day trading quite a bit. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of a victim of my own uh, preaching. I have a pinched nerve or something in my shoulder from trying to trade through this chop a couple of weeks ago and my my arm's going numb, right? <laughs> the doctor friend of mine who also trades and we were talking about trading. I'm like, by the way, I thought I'd get a little free medical device. Is it does uh when I'm day trading my shoulder gets real tight and now my arm's going numb, what should I do? It's like stop day trading. So I don't want to come across as the grand poobah on day trading, but every now and then I see a little opportunity and take it. And I've got to force myself to only trade when the opportunities are there. And I'm here anyway, so that's one of the things. And one thing I do like to do is, is an opening gap reversal, especially in thick individual issues. And we haven't had a lot of those lately, but I'll show you one in an ETF in one second. So I want to show you this gush trade from today. And there's the actual trade down there, just 100 shares. Kind of an S&G type of trade right before the close. And you can see it's right around five minutes before the close. And five minutes seems to be a good little window for this. And I try to force it to happen sometimes at 15 minutes to the close. But those don't seem to work as well. But one thing that I've observed is especially if the if the market just kind of chopped around all day market by being an ETF or whatever you're watching. But one thing I've observed is sometimes you get what I call a race to the finish, where all of a sudden a stock or an ETF will take off right in those last usually five minutes. And then you can get in and you could be willing to stop out at a really tight stop and then exit market on close and it work it work out nicely. So in answering the question, this is one intraday strategy. Now, don't rush out and trade this right away. Watch about, a, see if you can find about 100 examples and see when it works and see when it doesn't work. And 
I kind of have a feel for when it's going to work. And then sometimes I'll still take trades anyway. And then when it doesn't work, I'll tell myself, well, you knew it wasn't going to work anyway, right? So that there is a little bit of that feel thing going on. And I've been trading my core methodology probably for, I don't know, at least 25 years. My marriage, I, I was trading before I met Marcy. And we've got a 25-year anniversary coming up. So it's been at least 25 years. I haven't been actively day trading that long, although I have been taking some ogres here and there. And then early on, I used to trade S&P futures with the big contract. I used to day trade those. And that was a grueling, <laughs> hard thing. But I don't want to hold myself out as a day trader. But every now and then, I'll see these opportunities present themselves. And I'll show you a couple of that those tonight. But anyway, so if you are day trading, sometimes it's, it's things that I wouldn't normally do on a daily chart, like trade a breakout, okay, sans a an IPO, which some of those strategies are kind of breakout in nature. So here's a late day breakout, what I call a race to the finish. And I put it on a five minute chart so you could see it, but I was actually watching a 30 minute chart. And on a 30 minute chart, this just looks like a blob like this, that really didn't do anything, like stuck in this little congestion. The five minute chart kind of ex exacerbates and makes it look like it's making these crazy, crazy swings, but it's not quite as crazy as it looks, especially if you condense it down to like a 30 minute chart. And by the way, that's one thing I've done lately, not to retell the whole story from scratch, but I actually changed my charts on the futures to a higher time frame. And I noticed I got fewer and fewer trades. And then the trades that I did get were better and better and better because I wasn't chasing my own tail looking at a five minute chart. Anyway, in more recent times, I went from five minutes to 15. In more recent times, I'm looking more and more at 30 minute charts. And that's keeping me from chasing my own tail because you see something like this. Oh, it's off in the races. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You know, kind of a like, yeah, nah market or a Jackie Mason market, everyone look at it. But anyway, long story endless, end of the day, I noticed it was beginning to take off and you could stop yourself out right right below that base okay what i like to do if i get a positive movement in my favor and get within a couple of minutes of close i try to get that market on close order in and on some of these thicker etfs you can get them in pretty late and so i just exit market on close and that's pretty much the whole strategy in and of itself so to answer the question and i think it was john that asked it john r yeah, you will be doing some some things intraday if you are doing those type of trades that are a little bit more breakout in nature. And I think there's something here with this race to the finish. I think it's another one of those things where if I could be super patient, it would pay off. Let me see. I don't have it handy. But I think it was Monday or something. I saw it on my hands. Wait a minute. I might go find it. I did nothing all day on purpose. Yeah, and like the last 10 minutes of the day, I did okay just by trading that one little strategy, just by sitting on my hands and waiting. And that's the type of day trading I want to do. I mean, God, how great would that be if all you did was ignore the market all day and then you actually did you executed a near close strategy? Now, I know you got to be careful not to eat like a bird and shit like an elephant, but I do think that the odds could be stacked in your favor. So this is one thing that I do that that might be a little bit different on a different time frame to kind of start to, to begin to answer that question. Now, let's back things up a little bit and talk more about doing something intraday that would be a little bit closer to the core methodology. Now, I'm not a huge fan of doing huge big picture technical analysis on a leverage market like this, but I do think that it does have some merit and in this particular case, you can see we had a cup and handle bottom, and we also had a bow tie on a daily. And then on top of that, we had an ogre. Now, by the way, here's another thing that's something I've written extensively about in my morning pages is I'd be willing to bet if I just waited until the ETFs did something like this, a nice daily setup, and I go in and trade that ogre off a daily setup, okay? The wind is at my back. Lots of uh, sailing analogies tonight, right? And the chances of me succeeding are much, much greater. As I've said before, years ago, I was fortunate enough to work with a 
trader who was a day trader, he might only hold positions for minutes to maybe hours at most, but he would study daily charts, weekly charts, and sometimes monthly charts. An ogre is an opening gap reversal. And one of you guys, and I, I always forget to give credit to who, <laughs> but one of you guys came up with that, that um, uh, what do you call it, acronym? For that. But anyway, he would he would look at this huge big picture thing and he might only be in for a few minutes or a few hours, but he would put all this research behind him and then go in and then get his little piece out of the market. And I always thought that was pretty cool. And I was blessed to be able to learn from somebody like that very early on. Now, you might look at this and say, hey, Dave, and that's some overhead resistance. And it's like, well, you know, not my problem because I'm going to be out. If it made it to 20 something during the day, I'd, I would, I'd be pretty happy, right? <laughs> so I'm not really worried about that on an intraday trade. So this is what it looked like intraday. And I put a five minute chart so you can see it. But like I said, I've I've mostly gone to a 30 minute chart lately. And if you've been paying attention to me, you've noticed that those time frames keep getting higher and higher. So that's that's a trade there. As it was beginning to take off from the lows, I let it establish itself. I didn't try to jump in on the open, although I was tempted to take an S and G trade down here. But that's trading not to lose is a very dangerous thing. You want to let that market commit itself. And as I preach, if you're newer to trading these ogres, what you might want to do is pay attention to that daily chart, okay? So daily chart, the gap is here. You might want to put your entry up here. So you're not, if you're watching that five-minute chart, believe me, it's going to look like a little bar is going to be like that, you know, a little movement on a daily that big is going to be like that big. It's going to suck you in. Anyway, so that's where I got in. And this was today, by the way. And I mentioned this in the Facebook group. and then. Within about, I don't know how long, about 15 minutes or so, maybe less. Uh, anyway, what's that? Eight, yeah, less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes later, I hit the IPT. Now, I got a little greedy. I was going to try to hold on a little bit longer. 12.14 uh, was my IPT, and I was going to try to hold on to 12.20, and then I decided to just bail out when it starts coming back in. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where... What's the old, I think it was like a William O'Neill thing where the guy had the, the turkey trap and a turkey walks in and he's like, oh, great, I've got a turkey. You know, I'll be able to eat for a week. And then two turkeys walk in. So, oh, I got two turkeys. And then it was three and then four and then five. And then one walked out, another walked out. And he's like, as soon as another one walks back in, I'm going to shut the trap. And then the turkeys just kept walking out and he ended up with no turkeys. Anyway, I'm not sure if that's relevant, but you get the idea. So I decided I better I better go ahead and lock and load. And my initial IPT was 12.14. I got 12.12 out. That's fine. And then I'm lucky I did because look what happened. The market imploded and stopped me out. Of course, I think I went off to grab a snack or something or breakfast, I believe, if memory serves. And I was a little bummed out when I saw it taken off without me. But that that happens, okay? Now, ideally, what I want to happen, by the way, so you can kind of see this is kind of reminiscent of my daily trading okay i'm trying to intraday position trade what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to yeah i'm trying to get that little quick pop out but i want to hold on to this thing all day long and hopefully exit market on close so only made 211 bucks but that's better than poking the eye and i know it's dangerous to do this but the flip side you should do actually 211 dollars a day that's 50 something thousand dollars a year extra if you could do that every day so that's better than poking the eye and of course if you just s g trading and you're losing 200 bucks a day then that's a minus 50 thousand so it, it kind of cuts both ways and if anything i hope i'm coming across and saying and it's something that i'm personally trying to do is less is more and this is especially true when it comes to these intraday trades you want to wait until you find an opportunity like the socks l today before going in and that's why you don't see me mention a whole lot of intraday trades in the facebook group now if i see an ogre that i like i know the tidewater didn't work but every now and then you'll see me mention an ogre in the facebook group and that's something that i think could be trading i think you need to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait all right, I got a question on this one. And 
It's like, what do you do with something like ESAB? It's up. I have a bad habit, by the way, of answering a question that's not being asked. And my wife calls me on it, it frustrates her some, sometimes. It drives her crazy. Short trip. Uh, anyway, she didn't watch these, so I'm, I'm probably in the clear. So I didn't realize he pointed out there was overhead supply. So good job, Brian, for uh, seeing that. But 40% run, you know, what do you do with that 40% run from lows? Nothing, because you got a mountain overhead supply. And if you carry that forward, you can see we're just beginning to push into that. And you're just going to have to let it go. And, and one thing I've been seeing lately in a group a lot is uh, I have to tell everybody's getting anxious, you know, and, and hopefully that's a microcosm for what's out there. If this market starts going, then then everybody will pile in and push it higher. And it's going to be fantastic. But everybody's anxious to do something. And they're, you guys are, are just hoping and trying to make it happen. And there's just not a whole lot out there. It's kind of like this. Here, it's kind of like, hey, what do you do with this? It's up 40%. It's got overhead, but man, it's up 40%. Can we do something with that? And the answer is no. And then he said the same thing with Mac. Mac is up 80%. Now, that looks pretty damn good. That's a good little trend off its lows, but it also has a bunch of overhead supply. So unfortunately, in a case like that, I would also pass on the stock. Now, the other question was, you might explain why a 15% move in the SPY is really not generating setups. And I should have put the SPY in here. I didn't realize he said SPY, not S&P. Not a trading service and not in my own analysis. Day frustration is kicking in. Okay, that's what I was saying earlier is that there's, it, it, Brian spelled it out right there. Hey, I'm starting to get frustrated. And that's a market's job, by the way. You know, the market is going to do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people and the corollary to that which i picked up both of these from linda is the market will do the obvious in an unobvious manner and that means like if it's obviously going up it's going to have some big old whipsaws in between so yeah brian's right you take a look at this run from lows measured low to high that's a 15 percent run and that's pretty damn good given the time frame and you kind of squint your eyes and it looked like this it looks like this beautiful huge uptrend but if you connect the dots so to speak like i've been doing quite a bit we had that gap open the market took off came right back in then it rallied it came in then it rallied came in deeply okay tried to rally failed miserably took off again chopped around a little bit began to fail and then by the end of the today it bounced back a little bit so that's kind of a microcosm of what's going on in individual issues. Now, keep in mind, as a pullback trader, we need something that's going to be in a nice, ideally persistent trend like this, or some obvious transition from the bottom that's nice and clean, followed by a pullback. With the market all over the place, even though it's going higher, we're just not seeing that. And then, like Brian pointed out, great looking stocks. 40%, 80% moves from lows, beautiful stocks, but a mountain of overhead resistance to contend with. So you can't you can't throw all that out. You just have to wait and wait and wait. So this was a losing track. I threw this in last minute. I just want to show you that this is what we're kind of looking for, a nice persistent uptrend pullback. And you can see trend pullback, trend pullback, trend pullback. Okay, now all these pullbacks aren't perfect. But for the most part, this stock has trended nicely higher, and this last little pullback didn't work. Now, it did fail miserably, but that's what we're looking for, and that's what we're waiting for, something that looks like that. And as I said in the stock chart show, Trading Simplified show, I'm okay. I was pissed when I stopped out on this. Don't get me wrong. And I scream some F-bombs, as I normally do. But I have no regrets. I mean, other than in hindsight, right? But there's nothing here that I see in hindsight that would have stopped me from taking the trade. And and that's that's number one, as I think I said in the show, that's a bit of the true enlightenment that you're going to come to at some point in time is to get stopped out on a trade and look at it and say, this thing was beautiful. I'll take it again tomorrow. 
what you most likely will do and what i'm guilty of doing too okay i'm not immune and this is what makes it makes it harder the longer you're in this business the harder it becomes because when you realize you shouldn't be doing something and you did it anyway as livermore said a trader sometimes knows he's making mistakes and does it anyway and then as i often preach you know what you're doing wrong you know what you're doing wrong well you go back and look at the setup okay you back the chart out and without any hindsight look at the setup and a lot of times you'll say what the hell was i thinking well that's okay okay like i think we have an example here and it should be unless the slide got deleted where somebody just got creamed on a stock but the bottom line is the stock wasn't that great to begin with so oh, here it is so okay how about handling holdings going into earnings okay let me answer that question real quick i ignore all news okay it doesn't mean that you have to it's just what i do okay and that arlp we've been in it it's gonna be what two years i think it's it's it's, it's gonna to have to go to january but in january it's gonna be two years okay Earnings come out every three months. That's what, eight earning periods, if we make it that far. So let's just say we made it through about six earning periods so far. It comes to the territory, but it doesn't mean that you should do it. It's just the way I do it. And Larry Connors once said, I thought it was pretty smart, but it's not going to work with a longer term trend following where the outlier is key like this. But he did say something interesting. He said that you have to take an all or none approach when it comes to earnings. You're gonna to have to trade through every one of them, and that's what I do, because that's where I'm gonna catch that occasional outlier. The news is gonna be in my favor, or more importantly, obviously, the reaction to the news is in my favor. Or it's just gonna work out longer term, maybe a little shakeout here and there, but I'm able to survive that and ride it out because my stop is losing over time. So I trade through earnings, and every now and then I get whacked, but every now and then I get pleasantly surprised. Sometimes when I get whacked, I'm able to do a little damage control, and sometimes they'll come, they'll actually go positive on earnings day. Okay. Was there anything I could have done? Yes. Okay. First of all, I think the pullback's a little shallow in this one. Okay. Now the gap's a little tiny, but it, it did catch my eye. I don't like a gap against the setup, against the trend, especially within the setup. That gap was six months ago i'm not that worried about it but the, a gap within a setup unless it's a commodity related stock which i don't think this one is financial services then i would toss it out okay now it's not a huge gap but it's there and then the pullback could have probably been a little bit deeper it had a pretty good run and it could have been a little bit deeper on the pullback okay just kind of picking things apart so overall, I would say it was okay setup, but it wasn't an F yeah setup, okay? Not to pick on whoever sent this to me, uh, name withheld, so I better not say it. But he gave me permission to start beating him up, and that's great, that's good. And I'm not the grand pouvoir, but sometimes it's easy to see what's going on with someone else, easier to see what's going on than than yourself, right? How many of us, have neighbors where you're just like what the hell are they doing how could they be that stupid right but at the same time you're probably doing something just as stupid i gotta watch what i'm saying I got neighbors now they have to learn how to live you know <laughs> marcy's often telling me you're no longer in the country david <laughs> which he says david i'm in trouble all right, so we back this chart out. What do we see? It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It's electrocardiogram. Okay, so it's all over the place. So, and also, by the way, this little pullback was kind of right at this peak here. And especially if something's at fairly high levels, in this case, it was multi-year highs. By the time something gets all the way back up to its prior peak, it's already overbought, okay? So it's a very dangerous spot to look to get in so that's a strike against it that would that would immediately have me take it off my radar and then of course this crazy choppy electrocardiogram action now one of the questions that i was asked is well when do you change your mind about the longer term performance of the stock and, and i don't have a, a definitive answer for that i would say it depends because if you look at a chart you're looking at 
what people thought about the chart and from a psychological basis and you're trying to figure out what they're going to do next from a psychological basis okay so if it's all over the place then it's a little schizophrenic and and the people that are trading it or a little schizophrenic swj points out that if it's wide and loose there's no institutional support that might be true but there's also stocks that could trend really nicely uh without institutional support so i, I think i'm not going to disagree with you on that i think you might be on to something but the problem with with our methodology is we tend to trade a lot of smaller cap stocks but i guess every now and then something like arlp it's probably got a shit ton of institutional support so i'm not going to disagree with you on that you probably you're probably on to something i just don't know that institutional support is something that you can factor in to your trading i know the canceling people are, are really into it and, and maybe it works i don't know i like to just look at the charts okay but getting back to the personality of the stock the personality stock recommend the chart represents the personality of the stock the personality of the stock is represented by the players of the stock and so the players from this stock are all over the place they can't make up their friggin mind so if you get in this it's not all of a sudden going to start behaving nicely okay so that's a hopefully that answered that question and your stock picking will get better and better and better and and here's the beauty of stock picking is that as i've said quite a bit i did a course on stock selection and it took me 14 hours to bang it out total right but what you need to know you could you could learn in 10 minutes okay and i probably should do a i probably should do a youtube just on that a youtube short a one minute short and little things like is it wide and loose is it persistent? All those trend qualifiers we talked about last week, go to watch last week's week of charts. Does it have all these characteristics, okay? And that's that's 90% of the battle. The rest of the 10% is learning how to recognize that, okay? A little repetition and going through your charts. And it doesn't take long to recognize things like overhead supply. For instance, what do we have? Oh, I'm in the wrong chart. I'm getting a lot of trouble here. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, let's get rid of that. And let's go. All right, here we go. So for instance, I was just saying like, it takes a little while to recognize it, but what's, what do we have going on in Bitcoin? I mean, it just happens to be a random chart up. And um, somebody was recently saying charts are charts, and it reminded me of a, it's going to sound a little pretentious, but it was kind of cool. It was it was a, a very um, exciting moment in my life. It's just out of the blue. I was at this, what do you call the, uh, what do you call, I mean, it's been so long, a forum. <laughs> I was at the Italian Traders Forum and and they pulled they pulled me in. They said, well, Dave, they're they're having a little, discussion in this group in this room or whatever and there was a bunch of people in there and uh would you mind just going in and pull up a chart and talk a little bit about tactical analysis I'm like sure and uh they're like well what chart do you want and i looked around and behind me it was a chart of the dollar or something and i'm like this is fine <laughs> you know it's like and they were like it's like how could you just start talking about a chart well that's what i do for a living it's just look at charts and figure out where the market might be headed and technical analysis technical analysis right and i can look at a chart like this which is random chart i just pulled up bitcoin right and it's got a mountain of overhead supply okay it's got landry light below the 30 ema it's just chopping back and forth lately okay it recently took out support not good right so getting back to the stock selection or market selection all you need to know you can learn in 10 minutes maybe a little longer but it will take some practice 
a few million charts before you get it down pat. Now, a few million charts, ain't nobody got time for that. Well, yeah, you do. I look at 2,000 charts a day. I've probably looked at 20 million charts over my career. I forget how many. How many is that a year? Uh, what's 2,000 times 252? 252, talk amongst yourselves. So I look at a half a million charts at least a year times, let's say, 25 years at least. So that's 12 million 600 charts, 600,000 charts. So that's how you get good, okay? When I speak in person, it's like, I often say, any musicians, and somebody raised their hand, like, how'd you get good? They're like, practice, dumbass, implied. <laughs> I'm like, exactly. So you want to get good at looking at charts? Look at some charts. Anyway, Bitcoin, not so hot. Ethereum, I was listening to um, Zeon Musk and uh, the woman who runs that fund <laughs> that hasn't done so well. I'm not going to say her name, but uh, she's got one of the poorest performing funds on the planet. They even made an inverse fund so you could short it. I'm not going to say her name because I, I don't want to be shot in Friday. You know, it's like, I guess we're a couple of trades away from uh, <laughs> anarchy too. But anyway, it was her and a couple other people, and they were making uh, the guy with the beard from uh, the old Twitter guy, and they were making some really convincing arguments for Bitcoin, just things you never thought about, like how how instead of paying a thirty percent fee to get a few bucks to your relatives somewhere in the middle of Africa, you could do it through cryptocurrency, right? And uh, this is uh, this is Ethereum, by the way, and just all these other things that you never thought about, uh, use overuses of uh, if if a power plant's making too much power or has overage on power, nearly impossible to store power, right? Until the battery technology gets better, which we might be many years away, but you can you can run Bitcoin miners on that extra electricity. And it's a little more complicated than that, but you kind of get the idea. It's, it's kind of an amazing thing, but. Don't confuse the issue with facts. What is, is. This is uh, this is nasty, okay? So I don't see anything to do in crypto, at least for a while, but hey, what did I just say? Still do your homework. And you know what? I didn't do my homework today because I figured there'd be nothing worth doing. As I've said, at nausea, one thing I like to do is sort by relative strength, the day-over-day -day price change, not like an RSI indicator or anything like that. And just see if there's anything taken off that's worth a shot. All right, anybody want to talk about crypto or anything else? So the question is, what platform do you use? I use TC2000. If you go to my website, davelander.com, you can see a lot of the tools that I use. I use a lot of tools, probably more than I need, okay? But I do like, I do like TC because it's quick and dirty for a lot of things I do, and I can bang out. They got a lot of charts. So if you go to that, that click that link, go right here and click on this link. If you don't mind, I'll get a small uh, affiliate fee for that. So if you if you do get TC, do that. And I'll also give you my scans, which are actually on the back end of my website. I think they're in the members area. I'm not sure if they're behind a firewall or not. But anyway, that's the front of my website. Nobody could ever find a button. It's right in the middle. It's right there. And that's got a lot of resources including my books if you want them for free in pdf format okay let's take a look at anything else in crypto you guys want to look at let me bang out the let's go through the market real quick and then we'll uh i'll get to your questions but start asking about individual stocks now if you don't mind if the, or if there's any you want to talk about so let's get to tc all right, I can get through the market pretty quickly. Like I said, yeah, we've gone higher. We've been kind of all over the place. Obviously, keep an eye on 3,500. That's going to be really ugly if that gets taken out. Now, the thing is, it's hard for me to make a lot of predictions about this market. Well, first of all, as a trend follower, we just follow along, right? So it's hard to make an actual prediction. But if you take a look at the weekly chart, you can see we got fall, we have falling tops. Now, within a few weeks, by the way, that buy line for the TFM 10% system is going to start coming down. So we could get a signal with that. But it might take another, probably another four weeks before that could even happen. 
But anyway, weekly chart, you can see we're still in a downtrend, and it's pretty obvious, fall on top, fall on top, and then hopefully, a word you should never use in this business, that does not become a falling top. While we're down here, take a look at bonds. The good news here with bonds is that bonds are trying to turn a corner. As I said in the service tonight, I'd, I'd much rather than bottom out for a long, 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 long time and then begin to take off, then I would actually play them. Uh, this could be a bow tie. It might be worth playing. And there might be other ways to play this, this little uh, possible turnaround. But the main reason I want bonds to turn around is I'd like to see interest rates come down a little bit. The dollar, stick a fork in the dollar, and the dollar appears to be done, okay? Now, right now, it has a pretty good adverse correlation with stocks. With the intermarket technical analysis, as I preach, when it works, it works, but when it doesn't, don't use it as part of your analysis, obviously. But yeah, lately, dollar down, stocks up. NASDAQ Composite did a pretty decent opening gap reversal today. And I'm just noticing this for the first time. It is getting close to bow tying in here. So that's certainly a positive. I prefer bow ties off of many, many year lows, but at least it's off of multi year lows. So it could be better than the poke in the eye should it bow tie and set up. But it's kind of interesting in here. It's kind of got a little like a micro first thrust look to it. I wouldn't rush out and, and, and buy the overall market based on that, but you can see it's it's okay. Now, longer term, again, still in a downtrend. So you've got a long-term downtrend and a short-term uptrend, and the two are kind of fighting it out. So we'll see. And that's what you do a lot as a trend follower, as you say, we'll see. Now, let's take a look at the Rusty. The Rusty looks like a major bottom. You've got a big old fat double bottom, which is cool. I know you're going to party with me. And then... Of course, we had the gap lower today. We had the down about a percent. You sure? I sure would like to see this thing just bust out and keep on keeping on. But it did make it to the 200-day moving average. By the way, 200-day moving average, if you look at all these indices, when you get a chance, a lot of them have kissed that 200 a few times and got thwarted there, thwarted. But hopefully, once the next time or whatever, they'll bust through it. But yeah, that is a little bit of concern that we did get thwarted at the 200. Let's take a look at gold commodity real quick. Gold commodity has been pretty much on a tear. It's kind of interesting for reasons that are nothing to do with their screaming about on TV and the radio, but that's kind of interesting that gold's improving in here. Energies are just off of all time highs. I sure would like to see them bust through these prior highs in here and not look back. As I preached, that's one of my big problems when the market's at high levels and has this big old sell off and then comes all the way back. By the time it gets all the way back, it's over overbought on a longer term basis. But we might see some setups fairly soon in energy. So I, I have quite a few on my watch list in my momentum list waiting. Drugs have been doing really well as of late. As you can see, nice little uptrend there. Could use a little bit more pullback, but certainly looking okay. And by the way, if I, I real, I'm just thinking in my head. I know I didn't fully answer the question about the changing personality of the stocks, but uh, that's kind of like a Potter Stewart type of thing, Justice Potter Stewart. You kind of know it when you see it, when that stock begins to improve and, and trade cleanly, and then you can sort of blow off what happened in the past. But we're not quite there yet. I think candy is one that might be a good example of that, by the way, because this is kind of beautiful here. This nice little uptrend, this pullback could be a little bit deeper in here but if you back the chart way way out you can see it does have some electrocardiogram action but in more recent times these ranges have tightened up okay and then it sold it sold off to take out this range and then it began to rally again and it's not a pattern i trade but if you have a range and the market breaks out the range and then takes out break out or fake out and then break out that'll actually test out back when i did my mechanical testing that type of stuff will test out. I would not try to trade it, okay? But it is kind of interesting. So again, it's starting to get its act together and now it's starting to clean up. So it depends, but in a case like this, even though you could point out the fact that it's all over the place longer term, shorter term, it has been improving. Now, somebody asked about volume and the volume is a little light on this one. It used to be, you used to be able to trade a stock that traded 100,000 shares a day. 
but it seems like in more recent years, I don't know if they're double counting or what's going on, and that's one of the problems with using volume in your analysis, which we'll shelf that for another day since we're nearly out of time. But it seems like in more recent times, you need more and more volume on stocks. At least 200K, it seems like, as of late. This one does have about 300K on average, which is pretty good. It's a little cheaper stock, so we'd have to watch the spread on this one. But anyway, I did want to show it to you as a case of a stock that behaved in a certain way, and now it's beginning to behave better. So persistency suggests that somebody is interested in it, okay? And then if it has an orderly correction, it's kind of like just kind of slowly shaking out the nervous Nellies or whatever, and kind of a normal ebb and flow type of thing. Okay, uh, Jeff pointed out that SST was discretion. Yeah, I seem to remember this one. Yeah, this was one. This was from a long time ago, though, wasn't it? Was it early this year? I'm trying to think. I don't remember this one. I'll have to look it up. I might have it in a spreadsheet. But yeah, this one kind of took off nicely, obviously. You remember what we did with that, Jeff? It's been so long. So this was, yeah, this is one. Okay, I'm glad you pointed this out. I think I did pretty good on this one. I don't want to rub salt in anyone's wounds. But yeah, that's one I need to go back and look at. I don't think we scored much on it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I don't think we scored very well on that one mechanically. But it's one that I think I did put a little discretion on, and I'll check my records. And God, I hope I did. So it would be a, a great uh, example of that. Let me just see. Control F, SST. So I'm just checking real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we made. Okay, so I'm showing a a thousand dollar gain. Oh, and that was this year. I hope I have that included in my. Um, I'll have to double check to make sure that was included. But I'm showing a a thousand dollar gain in the first low, so it hit the IPT, and a fifteen hundred dollar gain in the second low. So I'll have to see how I fared with that. But yeah, that's what you want, man. That's that's what we're looking. This is what we live for, okay? something like that and you only need a few of those a year now i don't know why we didn't make more on this one than we did mechanically at least and i'll check my records and hopefully god i hope that i i, I know it seems like I, I did well at least for a little while on this one <laughs> but thanks for bringing that one up jeff i appreciate that that's what happened okay so it had a pre-market gap and those who saw it took it off the ipt and it, it got a big gain okay so it had a pre-market gap. I think the gap to here, a lot of people got excited and jumped on the IPT. And then this thing just rocketed higher during the day. But you can see it came right back in, unfortunately. So yeah, this was uh that was kind of a fun one. Yeah, we did, but your mechanical won't show it. Okay, so some of you guys actually wrote it out. That's cool. Hell yeah. All right. That makes me feel good. See, this is why I don't put out the the published results, because you can put a little discretion on these. And sometimes it's a little hard to trade it mechanically. Now, if you're newer to the service, then by all means, trade everything mechanically, get your feet wet. And then unfortunately, you're going to have to live through about two or three cycles of the market or at least six to eight months. OK, you guys, if you came in at the beginning of this year so far, you're just you're not too impressed. I know that. And I know it's kind of hard to tough it out through this. But eventually, these kind of moves do come along. I, it, these are fine. Don't get me wrong. But I'd much rather have an ARLP, ARLP, I'd much rather have a stock that does this, okay, longer term than one that just shoots up and gets you all excited for one day. But I'm not complaining. Yeah, CFLT. Okay, so Mark, thank you guys so much. CFLT. You mentioned it's, it's similar to that. Yeah, this is one that took off and I did put a little discretion on it. And but that was last year, so I have to look at that one. But that's a good idea. That's a good thing too. I'll make some notes when I when I do the editing uh, on this. He says, "Thank you, brother." Well, thank you, Mark, my brother from another mother. All right, PSN. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So here's a case where maybe this is a case where a stock with a with a bad personality is now beginning to get its act together. Okay, so now we're at all time highs. You know, my only concern here, and I know you could say, well, Dave, was it SGML that? Well, SGML was more kind of an IPO, but it did have a little bit of a characteristic. And that characteristic is 
if we're in a bear market like now, or if you're in a bear market, and the stock and the market begins to rally, the stocks that have done better than the market for a long time can be a source of funds, and then the, the people are going in and buying the value, okay? And as I said before, the value becomes the momentum, momentum become, becomes value. So that's the only problem is this could this could be a source of funds. But yeah, on a pullback, let's let's see what happens. Uh, HV is a little low, but sometimes HV gets low when you have persistency. So I, I would say that's that's worth watching. So good job on that one, John. Okay, Jeff says IPO ECBK has been good. ECBK. Okay. Yeah, but look how thin that is, man. That's crazy. Yeah, see, I can't do that. Okay, but but I hear you. Uh, yeah, look at that. Wow. You you played this? Yeah, you did half a normal position. Okay, so Jeff said he played this with a buy at B. Buy at B means you're buying a new closing high. I've got plenty of videos out there on that, and uh, maybe I'll do some YouTube shorts on that soon. Round 14, yeah, just eyeballing this. Buy at B would probably be, would have to close because it's close. Nope, nope, wouldn't have to close above that high. So, oh, wow. Yeah, buy at B would actually be right there within the first week. And you had okay volume. Uh, you had okay volume back then, okay, yeah. It's a bank, yeah, a bank. I wonder if I played that one. I hope I did. I don't seem to remember it. I'll look that one up too and uh, report back. Good for you, yeah. I don't remember many, I, I don't think I did it because I'd remember it, because uh, I don't remember too many IPOs from this year. I don't think I played any. I, I'll, I'll double check this one, but I doubt I played it. The range, no, I probably didn't play it. The range is probably too small, even though it looks like a big range here. It was probably too small of a range. Looks like that's only like a one point range. So no, I didn't play that one. I played another bank at some point in time. I can't remember which one. All right, any more stocks? Any more questions? We're just about out of time. Well, while we're on impasse, I want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, bring it up in Facebook. If we can't cover the detail there, I'll cover it next week. Ah, no, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone in the States and everyone else. Happy Thursday <laughs> uh, next week. As usual, again, I want to thank everybody for watching, and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.